Good morning, my Real News Media TV family. Thank you so much for tuning in this morning, and I'm wishing for everyone a wonderful and a productive day. And in the news this morning, Robert Morgan resigns as a public relations chairman for the JLP. Member of Parliament for Clarendon North Central, Robert Morgan, has resigned as the head of the Public Relations Committee of the Jamaica Labour Party. The confirmation came Sunday afternoon following the JLP's central executive meeting at the Belmont Road headquarters in St. Andrew. The JLP said that the post has not yet been filled. The party also said Homer Davis, Member of Parliament for St. James Southern, and Audley Gordon, Executive Director at the National Solid Waste Management Authority, also resigned their Deputy General Secretary posts. Deputy Mayor of Kingston, Councillor Delroy Williams, is the new Deputy General Secretary in charge of Area 1, while Deputy President of the Senate, Charles Sinclair, will take over as Deputy General Secretary in Area 4. Another major development on Sunday was the appointment of Darrell Vaz, Member of Parliament for Portland Western, as the new JLP Treasurer. Vaz replaces Senator Aubin Hill, who has resigned to the party's secretariat, where he will oversee strategic development, among other things. The central executive is the JLP's highest decision-making body outside of its annual conference. Sunday was the first central executive meeting since the local government elections on February 26. Paula Llewellyn walks. Blooded but unbowed, Jamaica's first woman director of public prosecutions, Paula Llewellyn, walked away from the job on Sunday 16 years after marching spectacularly into history, unable to survive the latest legal skirmish that had its genesis in parliamentary anguish. In the end, the legal gladiator hung up her spurs meekly. Her decision not to wait out the likely long battle to come over a constitutional ruling about extending her stay was encapsulated in a third statement from the Attorney General's chambers. The Director of Public Prosecutions, has advised that she is unable to carry out the functions of her office at this time. Llewellyn's departure could well serve to deepen the confusion that reigned in the hours following Friday's ruling by the Constitutional Court after the AG indicated that the Public Service Commission would be invited to appoint a qualified person to act in the role of DPP for the time being. Before the ink could dry on that statement, Leader of the Opposition People's National Party, Mark Golding, suggested that there is an absence of a public service commission whose term was negligently allowed to expire on March 31, 2024, without a new PSC being put in place to ensure seamless public administration. This, Golding declared, was a significant oversight by the government that could hinder ongoing public services, including the critical appointment of an acting DPP. It is clear that the public statements made by the Attorney General, Dr. Derek McCoy, and the Minister of Justice, Delroy Chuck, in the wake of the court's decision, represent either a profound misunderstanding or deliberate obfuscation of the law as expressed in the judgment of the Constitutional Court. Their actions have fatally undermined their credibility as holders of those important offices. The People's National Party is therefore calling for the immediate resignations of both the Attorney General and the Minister of Justice, Golden demanded. Throughout the Sunday, a slew of claims circulated on social media that the DPP's office would be vacant or not come Monday morning, but with no official statement being made until well after dark. The Jamaica Bar Association was forced to issue an advisory to its membership late Sunday evening. An attorney speaking to the news on condition of anonymity said registrars for the gun court and the circuit courts over the weekend contacted individual attorneys informing them that their matters will be postponed because of and until a DPP is appointed, making it so that a matter set to continue today would not be heard. As it stands though, we don't even know what's happening. My latest information was that the Chief Justice has stated it to the registries and the government, and the Chief Justice spoke, and there may be an acting DPP, the attorney said. I gather that the courts have formed the view that the office of the DPP is vacant, and by virtue of that, prosecutors don't have the authority to be acting on behalf of the DPP, so even though the Attorney General has published an interpretation, 
That interpretation is not shared by the wider legal fraternity, the attorney told the news. However, several hours later, head of the Jamaican bar Kevin Powell said that based on indications from the court's administration, matters were expected to proceed. Flooded by calls from its members, the defense bar advised that their matters before the Home Circuit Court and the Gun Court divisions of the courts would be stood down until a DPP is in place. At press time, the Justice Ministry had not budged from its decision to appeal last Friday's ruling after careful consideration of the judgment and in the public interest. On Friday, April 19, an all-woman full court comprising Justices Trisha Hutchinson Shelley, Simone wolf Reese, and Sonia Winter Blair held that while the amendment to the act increasing the retirement age of the DPP from 60 to 65 is constitutional, a new provision introduced into the Constitution via a second amendment giving the DPP the right to elect to remain in office without any role by the Prime Minister or the opposition is not a valid section and is severed from the Constitution because the process remains unchanged for extending the retirement age. Consequently, the panel said the section is unconstitutional, null or void, and of no legal effect. In a stellar career marked by a series of firsts, Llewellyn, a career prosecutor, was appointed Director of Public Prosecutions in March 2008, the first woman to hold the position. Unlike previous DPPs, who had been appointed simply on the recommendation of the Prime Minister, she had to apply through a competitive selection process administered by the PSC. She was the first woman to act in the position of director in 1999 and in 2003 became the first female to be appointed in the position of senior deputy director of public prosecutions. After establishing her credentials, Llewellyn emerged in 2008 confident, courageous, and all-conquering from the legal jungle which is the nation's justice system. On her way up, she battled some of Jamaica's most accomplished lawyers, among them K.D. Knight, Frank Phipps, Ian Ramsey, Jacqueline Samuels Brown, Churchill Nita, and Tom Tavares Finson. She has figured in cases ranging from Jim Brown to Zeke's, from Joel Andem to Mary Lynch, and from Traffic Gore to Dudos. In the heat of the legal arena, she has faced almost all of Jamaica's King's Council, including P.J. Patterson, the former Prime Minister, Winston Spaulding, Lord Anthony Gifford, Hedley Cunningham, Velma Hilton, Patrick Atkinson, Dr. Lloyd Barnett, and Delroy Chuck. Possessed of a voracious prosecutorial appetite, Llewellyn's passion for law and order has not been tempered by the decades of practice in the island's courts from the lowest to the highest. She is in a class of her own in the justice system. In the exercise of her vast powers, she can act first and tell the justice minister later, one writer said of her. But Llewellyn had often complained that like many strong women before her, the obstacles she faced were often motivated by sexist sentiments and the fact that she could never be compromised. She made a habit of knocking over her many combatants like pinballs. But on Sunday, a year before she would have ended her tenure, the unthinkable came. Chief Health Inspector awaits upgrades to unacceptable conditions at the crossroads market. A recommendation has been made that several markets in the corporate era be closed because of unacceptable conditions. This is according to Chief Public Health Inspector Grayson Hutchinson, who disclosed that the recommendation was made following an inspection of the market. Hutchinson also reported that time was given to have improvement work done, specifically on the crossroads market. However, he shared that a follow-up inspection revealed that the expected upgrades were not carried out. Hutchinson made the revelations during a meeting at the Kingston and the St. Andrew Municipal Corporation office last Friday. We carried out inspections of some of the markets and the conditions were unacceptable. As a matter of fact, the recommendation was in fact made for the closure of a couple of the markets, Hutchinson said. We thought that it was reasonable though to give additional time to carry out the upgrading and improvement works in the market and so the time was given for work to be done at the crossroads market and regrettably, we did another assessment of crossroads market and the work we would have expected to be done was not carried out and so it was our intention to further enforce the regulations, he added.
The chief inspector stated, however, that the newly installed mayor of Kingston, Andrew Swaby, has shown some commitment to improve the facilities and so he is waiting for those works to get underway before a further decision is taken on the market in Crossroads. Fortunately, though, we observed that the new mayor would have gone to Crossroads Market, and I believe there is that commitment for work to be done that will improve the market, and so we await the work that is supposed to be done to improve that facility and the general environment, Hutchinson said.